Good day, and welcome to Boone in the Woods, a weekly program where we talk about all things hunting and things in the home, but not just physical, spiritual as well. Hello, my name is Nathaniel Boone, and this is my wife, Lisa, and together we are the owner and operators of Boone in the Woods, a hunting property management business that focuses on our clients' farms, putting out food plots, putting up deer stands, taking care of their camera systems, and overall just general maintenance of their properties. So we also have our own food plot mixes, our own mineral mixes, and all those can be found on booneinthewoods.com. We are also the owners and operators of Lisa Boone Designs, where we sell quality artisan products like paint and other things that we sell to upcycle your thrifted goods or also to maybe switch up the things that you already have in your home. I also teach lots of tutorials on how to use my products. You can find all of it on social media or the links on my website, lisaboondesigns.com. We'll be talking about herd community as far as the deer and the turkeys on the, on the farms that we take care of. But at the same time, we're also going to be talking about the community that we keep as individuals. I found it interesting that herd actually have a community and they communicate with one another. Let's talk about that. So this is just a light topic. We're not going to go in depth on it, but you know, deer, they actually have their own way of communicating. Uh, if like me, you find yourself in the stand and you got a, a few does out in the field, you've got one particular doe that is usually the watchdog of all, of all the whole field. So, you know, she's going to be sitting there. She's going to got a keen eye on what's going on. She's going to alert the rest of them for danger that may come about. And how's she going to do that? She's going it, to, it, it's different ways. You know, sometimes they'll snort a little bit. Sometimes they'll blow. Sometimes they'll switch their tails back and forth. Uh, most commonly, they'll take and they'll stomp their foot. And then when they stomp that foot, what they're doing, they're actually trying to scare whatever's coming up away. So they're just kind of like us. You know, they're going to do whatever it takes to get the danger away. But, you know, there's many more uh, communication tools that they use. You know, bucks will come around, especially this time of year, but they'll, they'll make scrapes on the ground. They'll just break back the leaves and the grass with their hoofs. And literally, they will urinate in it. That's one form of communication. That tells what buck is in the area. He's marking his territory. Mm -hmm. At the same time, that doe comes around, and she's checking that scrape to see what buck is here. But she also will urinate in that scrape as well. And that lets that buck know what does are there, which does are ready, because right now we're coming up on their mating season. Deer actually live in, then they stay in a certain radius. So the bucks know the deer, but then they want to know which ones are ready because, you know. It's time. It's time. It's time to so procreate. It's, yeah. It's, it's interesting how they do that. So they communicate much like us uh, with body language. Mm -hmm. They teach their young ones. They train up their, child, their children, yeah. so to speak, in the way that they should go how to do the body language, how to communicate, and also what signs to look for for danger. If you've been out hunting very much at all, then you're going to know that whenever you walk into a field that you may wind up in fawns, for instance, they'll lay there, you know, especially right after firstborn, they'll lay there and you can almost walk up to them. And then yearlings, they're almost as bad, you know, they'll, they'll linger and they're curious, they're curious. animals. They're very yeah. curious animals and yeah. they want to know what you're doing just as the same as you want to know what they're doing. Because we want to mm -hmm. you know utilize everything that we can to see what trails they're using. We want to see where they're hanging out at. We want to see where they're bedding at, and we want to see where we can actually uh, intercept them and put them in our freezer. So at Boone in the Woods, you know, we have like a lot of people. We adapt, so we use hemp rope, and we can uh, we we sell a hemp rope kit. It's on our website, booneinthewoods.com. And we use that hemp rope kit along and we'll make a mock scrape, fake scrape, and get them started. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, there's all kinds, there's different scents as far as brands that you can use. Some use syn synthetic and then some people use all natural. And of course, you know, different people have different uh, opinions on what's good, what's not good. And you just have to make up your mind what your deer like because it, not all deer react to the same scent that you know we all use right it's all a little bit different right yeah
Yeah, if, if you're using something that you like, we would love to hear from you. Let us know, um, communicate with us, contact us, and give us your tips and tricks. We would love to, um, to know what you're doing as far as that goes. But it is interesting that wildlife live together. Mm -hmm. Even turkeys, they flock together. Mm -hmm. And it's about protection. And, they're, and they're, there's always that one, like you talked about, that will sit there and be the, the lookout. Yep. Now that that watchdog doe, as I call her, she's she's out there and she's keeping that keen eye out for danger or something strange. But you know the young ones, you know they're they're there to learn and they're they're watching that doe and they're learning from that doe. Or even the young bucks are learning from you know the older bucks. So you know it's just like in our community, we have to teach our young ones what's good, what's bad. We have to teach you know what they can allow into their circle. Mm, per se yeah and you know we just have to be careful just like the deer have to be careful yeah yeah i find it interesting i want to go ahead and share this scripture um as it relates to us so as, as you've noticed we are going to take the practical things the things that we have in our business and we're going to talk about those things you know boon in the woods and in the home but we're going to relate it always back to scripture uh, because we can find so much biblical truth in the natural and be able to apply it to our lives so that we could have understanding. So in our own lives, we have to have community, right? Mm -hmm. So the Bible says in Proverbs 27, 17, iron sharpens iron. So a man sharpened the countenance of his friend. And this is what the analogy that I got years ago, and it just helped me to understand really what that means and maybe you're a baby christian or maybe you just have never understood the concept of this so i hope that this will help it's the same element iron sharpens iron it's two pieces of iron it's the same element it's metal on metal so it's two like-minded individuals coming together intimate relationship because we have to come in and bond and connect and as we collide you know or as we hit each other the metal on metal on in that intimate um relationship sparks are gonna show off and and that is that fire of god that just is is seen and comes forth and we spark one another and as you if you've ever sharpened a blade or a knife as you're sharpening it there are shavings that fall off those are the dull things and in order to get that knife or that blade or that sword to become sharp, you have to scrape it against that other metal object. It's like Again, it's the same element and it sharpens it for cutting, for fighting, you know, um, as a weapon, so to speak. And so in order to do that, you, you have to have that friend that's going to hold you accountable, mm -hmm. that's going to say, hey, hey, you can't go in that circle. You have to say in this circle or... You know, that's not good for you, the Bible says, block. So that's what iron sharpens iron means, is two people coming together and because you're intimate. You have that um, connection and you trust that person. And so we all need that accountability partner. It's not necessarily just two people either. No, so, you no. Know, uh, as hunters, you know, of course, you know, I grew up hunting with my dad. And uh, the, I, I guess the first thing that he taught me to hunt was squirrel. And uh, and then rabbit, but we wound up and you know it, it's it's a camaraderie ship between two people, but also there it can be more than that. You know, uh, we we were we coon hunted as as I grew up, and that would be in groups of just it could be me and him, could be three of us, could be five or six of us, you know, all out together. So it is a could be a multitude of people, right? That all enjoy the same thing. Just like, you know, in this day and time, you know, uh, with the business that we have here, you know, we have a group of people that love to deer hunt. Yeah. And we have, uh, you know, we, we're doing life together for say, right. because, you know, we, we celebrate, uh, we celebrate each life. other and yeah, we, we celebrate, celebrate life. life. So we, uh, you know, we take the people that are in our circle and then we learn from them That's right. to better our lives. But at yes. the same time, you know, we pick one another up because they may have a down day. We may right. have a down day. We have to lift one another up. Exactly. Actually, that goes right in line with our next scripture, which is um, Ecclesiastes 4, 9 through 12. Two are better than one 
because they have a good reward for their labor. For if they fall, one will lift up his companion. But woe to him who is alone when he falls, for he has no one to help him up. Again, if two lie down together, they will keep warm. But how can one be warm alone? Though one may be overpowered by another, two can withstand him, and a three court is not quickly broken. And I love that um, beautiful story that Solomon was teaching, you know, his son and his family and us, essentially, that when you have Jesus in the middle of a relationship of two different people or a group of people, a threefold cord is not easily broken because he's in the center of everything that you do. But that's what, you know, if you fall, you have a friend that's going to pick mm -hmm. you up. They're not going to leave you there fallen in a hole. They're going to help you. And it's, it's your responsibility. Do you want the, the leg up, you know, mm -hmm. so to speak? Do you want to come out of that hole? But, you know. Which still reminds me of the deer herd because, you know, that doe with her fawns, they are going, if something does come along, and I've I seen a video uh, within the last week or so, and it was, uh, I believe it was a cow that was attacking a fawn, but oh. the, the mother deer, the mother doe was out there, and she was literally taking her feet, and she was, you know, mm -hmm. trying to uh, stamp that, you know, coyote to win and free that fawn. Right. And that's the same with us. You know, exactly. we're going to protect mm -hmm. those that are around us. Right. And we hope and pray that those that are around us will help protect us. That's you know. right. Yeah, because sometimes we can't see what's right in front of us because we're just, we're, you know, we have blindfolds on like horses. We only see what's right in front of us, like within a few feet, and we can't see what's up ahead, so to speak. And you have somebody else that comes in and can see that different perspective mm -hmm. and protect us. And so that's why it's so important to have the right circle of friends, the right relationship, the right community to do life with. And we can use that in our business as well. That's you right. Know, we, uh, we have uh, friends that are, some are better in business than we are. And we, if we'll take and we'll listen to those people and then we'll better our business, you know, that's right. Uh, Finances the same yeah. way. Yeah, you know, seek it, it counsel. Just, it all just works hand in hand to help one another. Yeah, that's actually actually another biblical concept. Proverbs eleven fourteen says, "Where there is no counsel, the people fall, but in the multitude of counselors, there is safety." And so you do have to be careful who you're listening to. Mm -hmm. You have to. That's why the Bible also says to discern and test the spirit. You have to know, like there are a lot of good things. Oh, but yeah. is it a God thing for you? Is it something that the Father wants for you to participate in in this season? So you have to take that counsel and you have to weigh it against Scripture. Is this biblically sound? Um, is this what the Father wants for me to do at this time? Well, it is, it is biblically sound. The Father does want me to deer hunt this fall, and He does want me to kill a deer to put in a freezer to feed the family. I think you're right, babe. I think so. you're right. But, you know, there's, there's a, a word that you wanted to mention, and it's so funny that you said it, because you, when you, we said what we were going to talk about, the first thing you said was fellowship. You wanted to talk about fellowship with the herd and, and us, and I think it's important to understand what fellowship means. Like, when I first became a Christian so many years ago... I was raised Catholic. I was never raised in the church. Um, so I did not understand church ease. <laughs> so in the pulpit, I distinctly remember the day she's up there, the pastor's wife, and she starts talking about fellowship. And I, she lost me. I had no idea what she was talking about. And it took me a while to figure out that it just meant hang out. Yeah. <laughs> Let's hang out. Let's do an activity together. Let's do life together. Let's um, go on a retreat together um, and, and have fun and laugh and iron sharpens iron, edify one another and talk and just eat and have fun. It's the same thing that we see in the deer herd. You know, yes. The deer herd, they are fellowshipping. You know, we, of course, most people like, well, you know, how are they fellowship and they're just out eating grass, you know, but they're, they're doing life together. They're living with each other. They're allowing each other. I mean, think about the, the fawns kicking up their heels and jumping mm -hmm. and running. Oh, yes. You know, I love to watch know. that. It's the same with goats. We have goats, mm -hmm. and goats and deer are very similar. similar. 
and they do love to play around and have fun. I love to watch them. So as the herd grows, I mean, as then they're learning from each other right. and their fellowship and they're doing life. But you talked about even hunting, like when you went with your dad and your uncles and your cousins, like there's a special bond that happens. Like our friends just went to North Dakota, they went duck hunting in the snow, <laughs> but they all stayed in a cabin mm -hmm. together. And there's something that happens when you do take trips with people and hang out with them in an intimate cabin or a shed or a hunting house. Well, like for us, mm -hmm. you know, as this business progressed, you know, I had quote unquote clients, but my clients have become family. Right. You know, uh, right. The, they're an integral part of our life. They are a very important part of our life. You know, uh, there are some that I talk to every day. There's some that I talk to once a week. And, you know, so whether it's texts or phone calls, but mm -hmm. they're very important to us and they yes. have become family. You they know? have become family. And, so and if we need anything, they're there. They and are. same thing, you know, in return, we're there for them. And so, that so there's expected. a bond there that has been built, mm -hmm. you know, but yes, I mean, family wise, you know, we, we built bonds, you know, hunting, mm -hmm. you know, growing up and, you know, that's something that I'll never forget. That's memories, you know, right. and just like these guys in North Dakota this, this past week, they have made memories. Right. Uh -oh. So some of them have been, you know, a little bit everywhere, all over the world hunting. And th mm -hmm. those are memories that they can pass down. Right. And so it's, that's awesome. Yeah. You yeah. Know. And they, and they teach their kids. A mm -hmm. lot of them, their kids are hunting. And so they just pass it down or they learned it from their dads. Right. Um, but you know, it's interesting because the, a lot of people don't realize this because they might picture God in a certain way, maybe as their own father. Like they, you know, you, you relate to God as you would relate to a, your own father or the men in your life. But He's, he's not like man. He's different. And so sometimes we portray our feelings to him. But the one thing that I know for sure is that he is a relational mm -hmm. father. And he is a good, good father. And he made us in his image to be relational. And so we're not supposed to do life alone. We're supposed to do life with people. Now, he is complete in himself. And he doesn't require us but he wants us he wants mm -hmm. us to have a relationship with right. him and i i love that i love that he cares so much and he does want us to be relational and so if you don't have a relationship with him stay tuned because we're going to tell you a little bit about that but you do have to to want that because he doesn't push himself on you so the one thing that First Thessalonians 5.11 says is that we should comfort each other and edify one another. That's why we have to do community. It's not community for unity, mm -hmm. like, you know, one, uh, more than one way to the Father, more than one way to heaven, but it's surrounding yourself with like-minded people in, in a believer's life that, that will edify you, that will sharpen you, that will tell you that you're doing something that's wrong. wrong. Mm -hmm. Um, and give you wise counsel. It's so important to have those people in your life. And I want you to think, if you're listening right now, do you have one person? You just need one. Do you have one person that you can count on that will give you truth, that will pray with you, pray for you, just help you in those times of trouble? And then if you don't, pray because he will send. He, he wants that for you. Pray about that. Definitely. You have a story that you want to share that is a true story. The uh, the safety tip, basically, it, it boils down to this. You know, we, we can never be too careful about what we do while we're in the woods hunting. But when you make that shot and when you, you hit that deer, and it doesn't matter whether you're bow hunting, whether you're gun hunting, crossbow, whatever, uh, and you're going to go after that deer when you see that deer, make sure that that deer is dead before you approach it. Quarter ar around it, come up from behind it, take a stick, poke it, take your gun, poke it, your bow, poke it, whatever the case, whatever you have, but just make sure that that deer is dead. Never walk up to it, its front side. And the reason I say that is because there is a young man within the last week, week and a half, 
that uh, he was bow hunting. I think he was 35 years old. Is that correct? He was in his 30s, I remember. And he he walked up to uh, his deer that he thought was, you know, down. And that deer wound up and evidently took his antlers and basically stabbed him. And it stabbed him in such a way it was it was a fatal blow. And he lost his life. And he left behind, you know, a, young a bride and two young children. Three. Three? He was three. So you just cannot be too careful in the woods when you're hunting and always practice uh, safety in everything that you do. You know, you do want to be careful. And I love that you have taught me all of these safety tips. It took me a long time before I actually went and hunted for myself. I, I went with you so many years in a row and I was shooting with my camera and, but I was learning and I was taking it all in. And so you do have to take it very serious. Definitely. You going to kill a big book this year? I hope so. <laughs> I aim to. I aim to. We'll see. We'll see. All right. So we're going to transition. We're going to talk about Lisa Boone Designs, but we're going to stay in that vein, you know, speaking about community. And I don't know if you think about this at all, but it is so important to shop local. Local businesses are vital. They're important for our communities. Um, how many communities do you go down and they're, you know, run down, they don't have businesses, they have empty buildings. And here in Western Kentucky, we, we live in a very small town and we do have some of that, but we do have some really awesome local businesses. And I just want to encourage you to be an encouragement to the local businesses. I know it's so convenient to hit that button, get on that big major website and get free shipping two days and then it's there. I do it. I mean, I get it. There's some things that you just have to hop on there. But if there are things that you know that are local, that you could help a local business out, because I'm going to tell you as a local business person, it is hard to have a brick and mortar. It is hard, you know, to pay all of the bills to the, 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 the businesses actually eat a lot of cost and mm -hmm you know, utilities are higher for a business than they are for residential. There are just so many um, business costs. And it takes a lot for someone to have the store open. And so shop local. A small business owner is going to sacrifice not only more money to be in business, but they're going to sacrifice more time to be in oh, business. Oh, definitely. it's more of a passion to them to have that business Yes. So, you know, whereas yeah. the bigger chain stores, you know, yeah, they've got it. They've they got it made. It. They've got the finances behind them to do the mm -hmm. marketing. They've got the finances to have the, the products, you know, and it's really hard on a small business it owner to, to overcome. Yeah. And, you know, there are some small business owners that are here locally that have franchises. So even though if you see it's a big name, it's a, it, it's a franchise, it's a local business. So, Go ahead and think about your gift giving, you know, this season and where you're going to shop. I know the Chamber of Commerce is doing a big push and they're trying to get everyone to shop local. Of course, there's the uh, Saturday shop local after Black Friday. Go ahead and take advantage. Start thinking about how you can support your local businesses and get quality products, mm -hmm. unique gifts even. Instead of doing, you know, the big store push, but it's also about not just helping shop local, but it's, you're supporting your neighbors. Well, you're that, supporting your brothers and sisters in Christ. You know, I was, I was going to say, it's still the same principle as that deer herd. Yes. It's still the same principle as the people that we have in our circle mm -hmm. as friends and family. Yeah. Business owners need to edify, yes. lift up one another. Yes. You know, hey, if you don't have a product that yes. somebody's wanting, then you yeah. send them down the road to and somebody I'm else. I'm so big on that. You know? you know, and a lot of people don't think about it, but like I love supporting other businesses that are like me or similar to me or that I that I go in and I love to shop at. I love to support and let everybody know about it. But, you know, when you support a local business, you're supporting a local family. Mm -hmm. 
you That's know, right. you, you're helping a local family put food on the table, take care of their pets and their family and their right. house and, you know, help them to have a great holiday season, you know, just like you want to have one. And so whether you're, um, whether you're talking about deer mineral or food plots or, you know, even the products that I sell, like we're, we're local, small businesses. And so it's such a blessing when people do support us and follow us on social media and share, Definitely. you know, because you don't realize that even just commenting on a Facebook post, commenting on Instagram or TikTok, whatever it is that we're pushing out there to grow our business and to, to build brand awareness, liking, commenting and sharing, it's huge. So maybe you can't go into the local store. Maybe they just have a website or maybe they have like a little pop-up thing. However you can push that small business, let me tell you, it is such a blessing. I get so encouraged. I have several friends that are local and some of them are not. And when they come on there and they pop on my live and just encourage me, like it just builds me up and makes me feel so good. And so I love to do that for other people because, you know, iron sharpens iron. That's right. Because there are people in the community that we do work with. There are people that, you know, we want to see them succeed just That's as right. well as we do. Absolutely. So you, you will be hearing from us on that as well. That's right. If you love do-it-yourself, I have artisan quality products that are zero VOC and safe for the environment. I retail DIY paint, which is a clay-based chalk style paint that will do anything and everything from watercolor all the way down to chunky, chunky goodness, drippy, layered, all kinds of really cool rustic looks to really modern looks. It does a little bit of everything. You can use it on metal, wood, plastic, you name it, it will adhere to anything. And I love to use it even on canvas and mixed media art. So if you're interested in that, you can find that on lisaboondesigns.com. Now, if you need something painted, if you have a piece of furniture that has lost its luster or you inherited it from someone or perhaps you purchased it in a yard sale and you want to give it a new life, uh, you can contact me and I can paint it for you or I can show you how to do it yourself. I'm hosting a gift workshop here in town, November 13th through the 21st. I might have some extra dates after Black Friday. Stay tuned for that details, but all of the dates and times are on my website now on the calendar. I'm going to have everything provided, the gift wrapping, the ribbon, the tissues. We're going to make tags, all of my supplies. I'm going to teach you how to do it yourself. And we're going to have a lot of fun and you're going to be giving some really awesome gifts to your loved ones. And it doesn't have to be for a specific thing. It could be some generic gifts that you want to have some wrapping paper for. So think about birthdays that you have coming up or anniversaries and go ahead and sign up on my website for the upcoming gift wrapping workshop. Now we want to leave you with this. So John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever, whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. We want to encourage you to seek him first. Pray about everything. Test the spirits and examine yourself to make sure that you're in the faith. That's in 2 Corinthians 13. Are you in the faith? Ask yourself. If you're not sure what that means and you don't know if you will spend eternity with the Father in heaven, listen up. In order to be called a child of God, you must receive His Son as your Savior. Recognize that you are a sinner in need of a Savior. Ask Him to forgive you for your sins. The Bible calls us to repent and to turn from our wicked ways. Does that mean that we'll or we'll never sin again? No, we all we'll always have sin. It's just part of our nature. So we're all sinners. He's quick to forgive. He teaches us all things. He leads us along the narrow path unto righteousness, and that just means in right standing with Him. Thank you for joining us. We pray that this episode was a blessing to you. We look forward to hearing from you. If you ask the Lord to come into your heart today, then please let us know. Or if you have a prayer request, contact us. Or even if you have a praise report, because we would like to rejoice with you. Be sure to tune in every Monday for our weekly program. Boone in the Woods. And in the home with Nathaniel and Lisa. <laughs>
Please follow all of our social media platforms to stay connected. And don't forget to see the links and you can hit us up on our websites. So for now, good day. Ciao.